Remove the cotter pin. You want to save this for reinstallation and then using adjustable joint pliers remove the slotted nut which will allow you to pull the hub from the car. Again, you want to save all of this for reinstallation. Remove the cotter pin that's holding your tie rod end to the spindle. And then you want to unbolt the tie rod end from the spindle. Using an 11 16 socket, remove the castle nut from the tie rod. Now we got to remove the tie rod from the spindle. We're using a ball joint splitter. If you don't have one of these to lift it up, you can just tap on the side, which will allow you to bring it up also. Again, you want to save the cotter pins and the nuts for reinstallation. Using a 5 8 socket, remove the nut that's holding the drag link or your main tie rod from the spindle. And then remove the tie rod end. Using a three-quarter inch wrench and socket, remove the kingpin bolt from the spindle. Now you remove the kingpin bolt. You're able to pull the spindle off the car. You want to save the kingpin bolt. You want to save the thrust washer. And you want to save the kingpin tube from the spindle. Lube these up before you install them into the new Jake spindle. After you clean and grease the kingpin tube. Insert it into Jake's new spindle. Put your stock thrust washer on top. Install the spindle to the axle using the stock kingpin tube and nut. Install the spindle to the new axle. Using three quarter inch wrench and socket, install the spindle to the axle securely. Now we want to install the tie rods to the car. The main drag link from wheel to wheel goes up through just like stock. And then your tie rod from the steering box goes down through the spindle as shown. Use the stock nuts and make sure you put your cotter pins back in. Using a 5 8 socket and an 11 16 wrench Securely install the main tie rod from wheel to wheel to the spindle. Using an 11 16 socket, install the tie rod from the steering box to the spindle. Securely do this and remember to reinstall your cotter pin. The final step is reinstalling your hub. As you can see, these spindles are brake capable. They have the six pre-drilled holes in the spindle. And you reinstall the hub the same way you took it off. And don't forget to put your cotter pin in. Now that you have the hub back on, double check that you reinstalled all your cotter pins and all the bolts are securely tightened. Perform the same steps to the driver's side of the car. Now we're going to lift the rear of a 1200 workhorse. The way you tell if it's a 1200 workhorse or an 800 workhorse is 1200 workhorses have the rear brake cable on top of the axle and 800 workhorse has the rear brake cable on the bottom of the axle. Place a jack under the rear end and place the frame on jack stands. You want to leave the jack under the rear end housing this is going to allow you to lower the rear once we have everything loose. Remove the cotter pin. And the bolt that is holding the brake cable mount to the rear. And remove the rear brake cable. Using a 9 16 socket, remove the shocks from the car. You want to save these bolts for reinstallation. Now that we got the shocks off both sides of the car, using a 9 16 socket, you want to unattach the U-bolts that are holding the leaf springs to the rear. Using 9 16 wrenches or ratchets, remove the rear leaf
spring bolt from the bottom of the shackle. And you're going to do the same thing to the front leaf spring bolt. It's going to be a three quarter inch on the outside and a nine sixteenth on the inside. Do this to both sides of the car. Using a 13 millimeter wrench, remove the nuts that are holding the stock brake cable mounts to the rear. Reinstall the nuts, but you are going to discard the stock brake cable mounts. Remove the cotter pin and then using an inch and an eighth socket, remove the nut holding the stock drum on the car. What we're going to do is remove the stock brake cable from the brake cable mount from the car and you need access to the bolts on the inside to remove that. Using half inch socket and wrench remove the bolt that is holding the stock brake cable mount to the car. We're going to discard the stock brake cable mount. The rear lift kit comes with new brake cable mounts. Do this for both the driver and passenger side. Using the stock hardware, reinstall the hubs to the car once you have the stock brake cable mounts removed. Using a 16 millimeter wrench, remove the rubber bump stop from the rear axle on both sides of the car. Now we're working on the driver's side of the car and the rear mounts are side specific. The brake mount on the rear mount will go to the front of the car and face towards the outside of the car. You want to take your stock U-bolt, put it in the front bottom mount, and it's going to install to the stock leaf spring mounts. And then using the supplied 3 8 by inch and a quarter bolts, you're going to mount the rear mounts to the back side of the car. Using the stock hardware, loosely install the leaf springs back to the car. And then using the jack, you want to maneuver your rear end to line the center pin of the leaf spring to the center pin of the, the center pin hole of the rear lift mount. Install the shock plate to the top of the leaf spring with your new shock mount hole facing towards the inside of the car and the rear. And you want to securely tighten using the stock U-bolt in the rear and the supplied 3 8 by inch and a half bolts in the front. The front, remember, you're going into the threaded studs on the bottom rear lift mount. Do this to both sides of the car. Reinstall the brake cable to the new brake cable mount. You do not want your brake cable to run underneath the leaf spring mount like it previously was. You want it to be below the leaf spring and if you want it, you can wire tie it up. You want to make sure you have enough cable length. Using the stock hardware, reattach the brake cable. Reinstall the stock shocks to both the driver and passenger side of the car using the stock hardware and your new bottom shock mount. Securely tighten the front and rear leaf spring mounts to both the driver and passenger side of the car. And then this is also a good time once you're done to go back and double check all nuts and bolts to make sure they're securely tightened. You're ready to install your wheels and tires and the rear lift kit is done. Now we're going to show you how to adjust the toe. What you want to do is take a tape measure and pick out a tread in the front portion of the front tires. Measure from the driver side to the passenger side to that same tread and get your measurement. Now you want to pick out the same tread in the rear portion of the front tires and measure across from driver side to passenger side and get your measurement. When the toe is properly set, you should be one-eighth to one-quarter inch narrower in the front than it is the rear. 
Right now, we are actually towed out. We are narrower in the rear than we are the front. So we're going to show you how to make the adjustment to tow it in properly. Using a 7 8 inch wrench, you need to loosen the jam nuts on both the driver and passenger side of your main tie rod that runs from wheel to wheel. Make sure you turn it around about four turns on each side to give you enough room to make adjustments. There's a flat spot in the middle of the tie rod and using a 9 16 wrench you want to turn the tie rod or actually go on to lengthen the tie rod because we're going to bring the front in by pushing the rear portion out. Turn it a turn or two and remeasure and once you have the proper alignment set where your front portion of the tires are, are a quarter inch narrower than the rear portion of the front tires use your 7 8 inch wrench and retighten your jam nuts.